The B.C. election is turning into a conversation about big money, taxpayers' dollars, of course, helping to put it all into perspective for us. We're joined now by Sun News commentator at large, John Robson. He's in our Ottawa studio. So, John, the B.C. Liberals call NDP leader Adrian Dix the $2 billion man. Now, yesterday he was the billion-dollar man. Today, new promises. He's the $2 billion man. Are we starting to see a, a theme build here? Yes, obviously they are... Uh playing to the stereotype across the country that the NDP are big spenders. And this is something you know, Thomas Mulcair needs to work against at a federal level, pointing to those NDP parties that have a good history on the budget, which might primarily means the prairie ones. Uh, the NDP in B.C. is a little bit different. Uh, their first time in office, they were trying to change everything, nationalizing things, breaking down privilege. And odd little detail, one of the things they did in 72, 75, they outlawed pay toilets. And it's strange to do, but yeah, but they, I mean, I think they felt this was an insult to the dignity of the of the little person, and perhaps not unreasonably. Uh, but at the same time, they did raise spending. Even those were inflationary times, but 20 percent a year for the time they were in power. Second time round. Again, their handling of the budget was not a thing of beauty. In fact, Glenn Clark, who later became premier, but he was finance minister early on, he said, you know, I raised taxes and nobody ever wrote to thank me. And you think, <laughs> Eh, wait, who did you think? But, of course, lots of people were saying we want more government. We want to, in some cases, you know, we want the rich to pay their fair share or somewhat more aggressively, we want to get those guys. So he did it and everyone went, boo, hiss, down with you. So, you know, it is a weakness. On the other hand, it's not as though the liberals have a sterling record on this front. No, they, they don't have a sterling record when it comes to the finances. And there are some questions about how they project going into the future, what the uh, what what BC finances would look like and whether their projections are reliable. There has been debate about that in British Columbia, and I think it continues. Well, yeah, because what their projections are is, yes, we've been running deficits. We know we were bad. They will go away in a couple of years if you reelect us. But if you don't, and if you elect those scary guys, well, who knows what'll happen? And, and to some extent, the answer comes back, well, we're going to really run the deficits. You're pretending you won't run. And, and again, the Liberals have been increasing spending. They're kind of hoping for miracles. Maybe they'll, they'll discover restraint. Uh, but nobody wants to say no to voters. And so in some sense, all of this, I think, is smoke and mirrors. I mean, if you, uh, if you look at spending in B.C. going from the early 70s up to the present day and say, okay, now tell me, when is it the Social Credit Party? When is it the NDP? When is it the Liberals? Which one are the prudent financial managers? You can't tell from the line. It just simply isn't there. Well, one of the things I found interesting, just as we watch the beginning of the campaign now, is right before the writ was dropped in British Columbia, there was the NDP releasing its uh, fiscal outlook. For, for the province, and they tried to get everything out on the table. Here's how we project the deficits to be. Here is how we project our spending to be overall, with the details still to come, and obviously we're starting to find out some of those details now. And it was as if they were, they were saying, yes, we are going to raise some taxes and we are going to run deficits for a little while. Let's just get this off the table now. But, but the B.C. Liberals aren't letting it rest. They're still going with the traditional anti-NDP theme. Yeah, which may be partly a case of Sherlock Holmes's maxim that when you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however unlikely, may, must be the what you you, what you take. And in this case, what else can the B.C. Liberals run on other than our opponents are irresponsible morons when it comes to the budget? But again, you look at it, the, the NDP wants to increase taxes on the wealthy by first four and a half percentage points. Yeah. The Liberals want to do it by two and a bit. So there's not like a huge argument there. Uh, the NDP want to raise the corporate tax by one percent and the Liberals don't. And then there's some argument with financial institution taxes, which is a very good way to have people relocate to Alberta. But these are in fact fairly small issues. It's really about, we all want to keep government big and none of us has any idea how to pay for it so nya 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 they really stink and voters could get better if they insisted on it but it doesn't look like voters uh, mind having those two options which are there are shades of difference between them but you're right that at the at the core there are some pretty strong similarities yeah and again this there's this scary writer Anthony de Jassy who says if you look at governments over many decades they have found the perfect mix of taxes and spending to give things to people and 
as much as possible and take as little as possible. This has worked out in, in bureaucracies that don't like trouble and political parties that don't like to lose elections. But the problem is the cost is growing and the re faster than the revenue. And he says they're like a, a man on a treadmill that keeps speeding up. They can't stay on, but they don't dare get off. And that's the position both parties are in. I mean, who really believes the fiscal projections of either party? But until someone comes along, and, and again, I brought up the, B the NDP in the yeah. 70s because they had a radically different program than the Socreds. Like it or hate it, they really said, well, do things differently, including there was no question period when they were first elected. The Socrates didn't like trouble. The NDP said this is bad government. They brought in question period. Radical stuff. Right. Well, somebody needs to come in with a radical program of doing less. Otherwise, you're going to be fiddling at the edges and arguing over budgets that nobody really believes. And then you're going to get into office, as the NDP looked like they will, and say, oh, it's worse than we realized. That stay in line. That yeah. <laughs> John Robson, thank you. Okay.